Hi everybody, my name is Corey Armstrong Smith. I'm the fire prevention officer with Norfolk County Fire Department. I'm the guy who gets to teach you about fire safety and how to stay safe in your homes. I'm at Fire Station 5 in Delhi, and we're here to show you a little bit about the trucks and maybe teach you a few things about fire safety. I'm joined by some of my friends, Assistant Fire Chief James Robertson and his two daughters, Maddie and Kenzie, are gonna show us around the trucks and show us a few things that we do to stay safe on the fire department and a few things you can do to stay safe at home. Hi everybody. I'm Assistant Fire Chief James Robertson, and I'm gonna show you our first truck here at Station 5 Delhi. So this truck behind me is called an engine. So when we go to a fire, it's very important that we bring our own water. So inside of this big truck is a lot of water that we spray on it using our hoses. This panel right here kind of looks like a computer. There's switches and knobs and all sorts of things you can turn. And what this does is help us get water out of the nozzle. So at home, you probably have a garden hose and you wanna turn on your water and you just, you know, mommy or daddy twist a, a lever. Well, this is kind of the same thing. When we want water, we just pull one of these handles and it comes out one of our hoses. Come with me. A lot of people ask us, why are our trucks so big? Well, our trucks are so big because we have a lot of equipment to, to bring with us. We never know what we're gonna face, so we try to bring lots of things, and that way we have it if we need it. So, for example, in this compartment here is something I hope you, many of you recognize. It's called a life jacket. So this is what we wear anytime we're around or in water because we make sure we, we want to be safe. And I want you as our friends to be safe as well. So make sure you wear these when you're uh, swimming or at the beach or anywhere around water. We have lots of different tools that we use. Here's a really neat tool. So this is a camera. It's a little different than the camera on uh, your parents' phone. What this camera does, it allows us to see through the smoke. So if a firefighter was looking for you and, and you were in your bedroom and it was smoky, this can look right through that smoke and we could find you a lot quicker and get you out to safety. Another really neat tool we have, and this is a big tool, is called the Jaws of Life. So this looks like kind of a big pair of scissors and really that's what it is. So this is the scissors that firefighters use to help cut people out when they're in trouble. Uh, maybe they're stuck in a car or a truck. So this can cut right through metal, metal like this. It would cut through it just like butter. It's very heavy and this is a tool we use and uh, it, it, it works very, very well. So friends, this is the back of the fire engine. We keep some very important tools back here. The most important set of tools we have is this. Do you know what this is? That's right, it's a fire hose. So this is how we spray the water. We have different size hoses. So if we have a big fire, we use a big hose and a big nozzle. So a firefighter, we, uh, we charge the line and when we want water to come out, we pull that back and psh, the water goes out. If you look up here, we carry lots and lots of hose because sometimes we can't park close to the fire. We have hundreds and hundreds of feet of hose. It's enough hose we could go all the way around your school. We also have some other important tools on the back. This is an ax. Firefighters use axes uh, to help cut people out of things. All right, now this is a tool, not a toy. If you ever see an ax at home, please don't play with it because it's very sharp and we don't want you to, to accidentally cut yourself. We have lots of different tools back here that we use and a whole bag of tools to help us hook to a hydrant. And you might have a fire hydrant outside your house. That's one way firefighters can get water when we use all the water in our trucks. Let's go, let's keep looking. So friends, this is the other side of our fire engine. Now, sometimes we have to fight fires that are higher than we can reach, maybe on the second or third story of a house. So for that, we need ladders. So as you can see at the top of our truck, we carry lots of different types of ladders. But as you can see, it's way up there. How do you think we get up to it? Any thoughts? <coughs> I can't reach from here. We'll show you.
So now that the ladder is down, myself and a couple other firefighters can take it and put it up to a window. This is the inside of Fire Engine 5 in Delhi. This is the driver's seat. This is where all the driving happens. And the seat that you're in is the captain's seat. He's the one that makes all of the commands. He's the one in charge. So the driver has a lot of responsibilities when he's driving. He has to make sure that all of the emergency lights are working. And that's all of these switches all up here. Almost looks like an airplane, there's so many switches. He also has to turn on the siren to make sure that people stay out of the way when we're on our way to a call. That's this machine up here. When he turns it on, the siren will come on. And he also has to talk to 911. When you call 911 on the phone and you give them your address, 911 talks to us through this radio. They tell us exactly where you are and exactly what your emergency is so we can get there really quickly. Make sure that you know your address in case you ever have to call 911. This is the back seat of fire engine number five. This is where the firefighters sit when they're on their way to a fire call. You'll notice that all of their packs are built into the chairs in the back of these, uh, in the back of this truck. And the reason for that is the firefighters have to get ready really quickly on their way to their emergency. So they get in the chair, they put their seat belts on, and then they're able to put all these packs and all this equipment on while they're sitting in their chair on the way to the call. That way they can work really quickly once they get to the scene. Okay friends, before we view any more trucks, I think it's important to practice some skills. So what I'd like to practice with you is stop, drop, and roll. And to do that, I'd like to bring in a very special guest. Oh, Sparky! Sparky the fire dog! Sparky, can you help my daughters, Madison and Mackenzie, learn their stop, drop, and roll? All right. So Sparky, what's the first thing we do? Oh, fist bump. <laughs> so Sparky, what's the first thing we do? Stop. If our clothes catch on fire, we stop. We don't run around, okay? What's the second thing we do? Drop to the ground. Girls, drop to the ground. Okay, cover our faces and then Roll over and over and over and over, back and forth, covering our face. Good job, girls. All right. Thank you, Sparky, for showing them how to stop, drop, and roll. So if our clothes are ever caught on fire, we're going to stop, drop, and roll, and we're going to keep rolling until that fire is out. Good job. Thank you, Sparky. <laughs> and say bye to all our friends. So this is Station 5's tanker truck. A tanker is a little bit different than a pumper or an engine because it's designed to get a lot of water to a fire where there isn't hydrants. You'll see it's a little bit different. It's a shorter truck and there's not quite as many fancy things on the side, but it still has a very important job. Inside of the back of this truck is lots and lots and lots of water, all kinds of water, enough to fill a swimming pool. And all of that water has to be delivered to a fire if there's no hydrants or no other way of getting water to a fire. So this truck is designed to get all that water there, give it to the pumper or the engine that you saw earlier, and then go back and get more water from a place where there's a hydrant. So you might be wondering, how do we get water in and out of a tanker truck? Well, there's a couple different ways, but this is the most important. This valve down here, we hook a hose up to from the hydrant. So that's how we get water in. We keep filling and filling until the truck is full. And then when we get to the scene, we fold this part down right here. And inside of that is a giant bathtub. It's a huge bathtub. It looks like a swimming pool and we can put it right on the road. And then that way the, uh, we can fill that with water and then the pumper or the engine can take the water from that spot. But how do we get the water out of the tanker into that big bathtub? That's what this part is for. This part is at the very bottom of that water inside that truck. And when we turn that on, it's like pulling the drain out in the sink in the kitchen. All the water inside the truck just goes whoosh right into that bathtub. And now the firefighters can use it to put out the fire. Firefighters do a lot more than just put out fires. 
We respond to all kinds of emergencies, all kinds of rescues, uh, car accidents, uh, sometimes some medical issues, and we have lots of different machines that help us do those jobs. Some fire stations have little tiny fire trucks about this big for going off-road into fields and stuff to put out fires. Uh, some stations have boats to go out onto our lakes and our ponds uh, to help do rescues there or help somebody who, uh, who may, might be hurt or needs help. And this station, Station 5, also has what we call a RAV unit. And what it's designed for is for getting people who are sick or people who are hurt that are way back in fields or on trails or on paths and we can't carry them out. They're too far in. So this machine is designed to go back and help uh, people in medical emergencies. All right, Maddie and Kenzie are going to help show you what happens when firefighters use their hoses. So this hose is all set up and ready with water. And just like firefighter James said, when they pull back on that lever, the water sprays. So if you notice, that water spray is pretty smooth. That hose has the ability of, of doing a really straight stream, like what we call that, and doing more of a fog pattern. And each way puts out fires differently. This, this fog pattern is actually a lot safer for firefighters. It's used to keep them safe by keeping the air around them cool. Whereas this pattern helps dig deep into a fire and put it out faster. So the firefighters use a combination of the two so they can do, do their job quickly and safely. As you can see, it's extremely hard work being a firefighter. Are you almost done there, girls? We got trucks to wash. Trucks to wash? Absolutely. So we are going to put on all of our fire gear and we're gonna show everybody watching the video how we do it and why we do it, why we put it all on, right? So Maddie and Kinsey are going to work with Assistant Fire Chief James Robertson, and we are going to put on our gear and show you how all that works. So we're gonna start with the boots at the bottom. See those big rubber boots? Those are actually really, really strong boots. They've got steel in the toe and steel on the bottom so that a firefighter can go in a fire and not hurt themselves. Pull up the pants, ladies. All right. So our pants actually already come stuffed around our boots. That's so we can get them on really quick. So those pants are really, really tough. They're made of really strong material so they don't cut really easy. That keeps the firefighter safe. And you can see they're bright colors, all the stripes on the bottom and, and the boots are nice and bright. That's so that we can see them at night. We want them to be really safe. That's the same as those reflectors on your bicycles at home. See down there? Look at that. Yeah, both girls got it pretty good. Right on, okay, so what comes next? Uh, let's put on a coat. A firefighter has to have a coat, right? We actually call these bunker coats. They're really, really heavy, but they're designed to keep a firefighter cool when it's really, really hot outside. So you can see they do up really tight. Firefighter James has done this once or twice, I think. Look at him, he's all ready. Look at all that reflective. We're keeping our firefighters as safe as we can when they're out on a scene. Maddie and Kenzie are getting there. They're looking pretty good too. There's no rush. <laughs> Excellent, look at this, three firefighters ready to work. So they're almost ready, what are they missing? I think they're missing a helmet. They're not gonna stay very safe without a helmet, are they? So just like when you're riding a bicycle or a skateboard or rollerblades, you need a helmet, right? So firefighters also need a helmet. The fire chief has a white helmet. Isn't that cool? A regular firefighter has a yellow helmet. So Maddie and Kenzie have yellow helmets. So they're ready to work. All they need is gloves. We don't have any gloves. 
Maddie and Kenzie will get gloves before we put them to work, we promise. But Firefighter James has gloves and he's ready to go. He's got his gloves on. Those are special gloves designed to go into fires. They're not fireproof, but they're designed to protect them in really, really warm places. So he's got gloves, he's ready to go. Does he look like he's ready to work, girls? Yes. Absolutely, he does. <laughs> Good job. All right, Firefighter James is gonna show us all the rest of the firefighter gear that they wear when they go into a fire. So that big bottle contains air. It contains oxygen that a firefighter can breathe in a fire. Since you don't have any of those at home, you don't stay inside, right? You get out and you stay out. That's what we tell anyone that doesn't have a firefighter handy. So, Firefighter James is gonna put on his mask. That mask keeps his eyes safe and keeps his face safe from fire as well as letting him connect his, uh, his oxygen supply to him. He's got a hood that goes over his head and that protects everywhere else from the heat from being in a fire. And of course his helmet has to go back on because we always be safe with our helmets. Awesome. So the last thing is the oxygen tank. It's kind of like a knapsack. It goes on his back and then he can do it up just like a knapsack. He starts with the bottom one and then he does up the ones on the sides, just like that. And now he's ready to go. All he has to do is what we call put him on air. And that basically means that he's gonna connect that to the front of his mask. And now the air is coming from inside that pack, inside that bottle, all the way around through that tube and into his mask at the front of his face. So now if you look around, there's none, no skin at all left on Firefighter James. He can go into a fire and he's safe, he can't be hurt at all. Now you don't have any of this at home, which is why you need to get out and stay out. So this is Firefighter James. Does he, does he look like a mean guy? Does he look scary? He, he sounds a little bit like Darth Vader, we know, but he's not really a scary guy at all, right? So if you're ever seeing a firefighter somewhere and he's asking you to get out or come with them, what are you gonna do? You're gonna come with them, right. Good job, excellent. Thanks, Firefighter James. Okay, friends, that's it for the tour of Station 5 in Delhi. Thank you very much for joining us. On behalf of Fire Prevention Officer Corey and myself, and Maddie and Kenzie, we're very happy that you were able to come in and see the trucks with us and spend some time and practice your stop, drop, and roll. Remember to practice that at home. It could save your life one day. Bye. 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 Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody.